guest, the President of the United States and Dr. Biden, accompanied by Javier Quiroz Castro. <laughs> Javier, they all showed up for you. <laughs> oh, please sit down, please. <clears throat> so who knows the possibility of a dream better than those who traveled miles just to find it? I've seen it over and over again in my community college students, immigrants and refugees, first-generation Americans who take nothing for granted. They show up, they don't complain, and they only ask for one thing in return, the chance to work hard and build a good life for themselves and for their families. That's the promise of America. That's the promise that drew Joe's and my ancestors to the United States that we are a nation defined not by language or ethnicity, by race or religion, that America is and always has been defined by us, we the people. So today I want to tell you an American story. You came to this country over a decade ago to work, to study, to find a future. You made a plan and then you fell in love. So you built a life, a home, one filled with big smiles on little faces, with laughter and skin knees, with PTA meetings and soccer practice. You go to the school of your dreams and start a business and tutor kids in math after school. And all you want is to give your child all the possibility of the world. But hanging over you is a shadow a missing piece of paper, the possibility that your family may not be able to stay together. It's a story that too many families all across the country live every day. Since Joe took office, we've heard from those mothers and daughters, those fathers and sons, about the agony of that shadow. So Joe is doing what he always does, leading the way with compassion and experience. Take <laughs> Taking the action of our nation that our nation needs to thrive. Today, Joe is helping our country continue reaching for the dream of America. With our different backgrounds and beliefs, each of us makes our nation and remakes it in big ways and small ones. We are millions of individuals that add up to something so much bigger than any one of us. And that's what Joe is doing today for all of us, for the communities that are stronger because of the immigrants who call them home, for the thousands of families who have added their bright and beautiful threads to our American tapestry, for those mothers and husbands and dreamers who have waited so long, worked so hard, and given so much, for people like Javier, who was able to pursue his dream 
of being a nurse thanks to DACA. <laughs> who saves lives every day, whose family needs him, and who shouldn't have to live in fear. Please help me welcome Javier Quiroz Castro. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Javier Quiroz Castro. My resilient parents brought me to this country to give me a chance at a better future when I was just three years old. I am a dreamer. Growing up undocumented was not easy. Like thousands of other immigrants, my parents endured hard labor in order to provide for the family. They are a symbol of the American dream. And they helped me with my dream, which was higher education. Now I have a beautiful wife, Haley. <laughs> and two magnific magnificent children, all of whom are US citizens yes. and who are counting on me. Thanks to the DACA program, by the way, created by then Vice President Biden, um, I was able to become a registered nurse. Um, I have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. I now have the privilege to work for Houston Methodist, the largest, the number one hospital system in all of Texas. Being a nurse has allowed me to give back to my community while supporting my family especially during the pandemic. I help take care of patients in our COVID-19 critical care unit. Saving American lives was only possible because of DACA. It allowed me to live and work and build a family in the only country I have ever known and loved. I stand before you today filled with hope and gratitude, because it is a privilege to personally thank President Biden for delivering on his promise to protect American families like mine. His actions today will prevent hundreds of thousands of families like mine across America from being torn apart allowing us to continue to contribute to our communities and build a brighter, bigger future for our children. It is now my great honor to introduce the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Javier, thank you. Today's a good day. Yes. Yes. First bill I introduced when I was president, an immigration bill that included this provision, but it never got off the ground. We need a little more help. But now, today, a significant portion of it's being passed or being by executive order. Javier, thank you for the introduction and for sharing your family story. You know, I've often said, doctors, we've been a significant consumer of health care in my family. Spent a lot of time in hospitals and 
for our family. My, anyway. And uh, I always said that doctors let you live, nurses make you want to live. Not a joke. A lot of time in ICU, a lot of time with my son, a lot of time. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, if there's any angels in heaven, they're all nurses, men and women. Not a joke. So thank you, but you did help us get through the pandemic, pal, and for all you're doing for our country. My name's Joe Biden. I'm Jill Biden's husband. <laughs> thanks to all the members of Congress and Homeland Security Secretary. I'm not sure I'm going to introduce you all the way. But all kidding aside, Secretary Mayorkas, as well as Secretary Becerra, and advocates and families for law enforcement, faith leaders, everybody is here. Two weeks ago, I did what Republicans in Congress refused to do. I took action to secure our border. That included restricting unlawful crossings at our southern border, making decisions on asylum more quickly, and so much more. And so far, it's working. Since we implemented my order, encounters have dropped 25 percent at the border. And we're seeing the lowest number we've seen in a long time. But, but folks, it took this step after the bipartisan agreement one of the most conservative Republican senators had helped work through in over a four, four or five week period, the strongest bipartisan security agreement that's ever been seen. But we were about to move forward when Republicans walked away from the deal for the most pathetic and petty of reasons. Donald Trump got on the phone literally and started in the press to confirm this and calling the calling senator saying, don't, don't go ahead and do this. Don't support this legislation that had bipartisan support. And uh, he asked, when you asked why, he said it wouldn't, it would hurt him politically and help me instead. So much for Republicans caring about the border. I also know many people in this room also had concerns about the steps I'd taken. I heard and respected from many of you and many people behind me of the concerns you felt as President and I had to take these actions. Every nation must secure its borders, just that simple. And if Trump and the Republicans wouldn't do it working with me, then I would do it on my own, and I did. At the time I took these steps to secure the border, I also said that I would move to fix problems that made our immigration system unfair, unjust, and provisions that simply made it no sense at all. Specifically, steps that will be good for dreamers, married couples, and for Americans. That's why we're here today. A few days ago, we marked the 12th anniversary of taking care of dreamers as, that President Obama and I put in place. There are a few of these, immigrant, of these immigration areas that have had most positive area impact and gotten more support from the American people across the board. These young people known as Dreamers, Hispanics, South Asians, and more, who came to America as children, only know America as their home, have been able to live and learn out of the shadows, out of the shadows. So many of them have graduated from high school and college and are starting families on their own building successful careers, serving our nation in uniform, and so, so much more. We're much better and stronger nation because of dreamers like Javier, who just introduced me. So today I'm announcing new measures to clarify and speed up work visas to help people, including dreamers, who have graduated from U.S. colleges and universities, landed jobs in high-demand, high-skilled professions that we need to have grow to see our economy grow. It's the right thing to do. educated at U.S. college and universities put their skills and knowledge to work for here in America. I want to keep building the strongest economy in the world with the best workforce in the world. We've already created 15 million new jobs, a record. We're seeing record economic growth, a record of small business growth. And I doubt why the action we're taking today matters. If you wonder about that, just ask business leaders, ask labor leaders, ask economists, ask elected officials. They know it's good for American business. They know it's good for the American economy. They know it's good for America, period. This step builds on other actions we've taken to support dreamers, from defending dreamers in the courts and expressing, expanding access to health care for millions of Americans under the Affordable Care Act, including for dreamers. The 
second action I'm announcing today is about keeping families together. My dad used to have an expression. He said, Joey, family is about the beginning, middle, and the end, about keeping couples together who are married, <laughs> where one spouse is a U.S. citizen, the other is undocumented. They've been living in the United States for at least 10 years. These couples have been raising families, sending their kids to church and school, paying taxes, contributing to our country for every — for 10 years or more. Matter of fact, the average time they've spent here is 23 years, the people we're affecting today. But living in the United States all this time with this fear and uncertainty, we can fix that. And that's what I'm going to do today, fix it. <laughs> require any fundamental change in our immigration law. There's already a system in place for people we're talking about today. But the process is cumbersome, risky, and it separates families. Under the current process, undocumented spouses of U.S. citizens must go back to their home country, for example, to Mexico, for example, to fill out paperwork and obtain long-term legal status. They have to leave their families in America with no assurance that they'll be allowed back in the United States. So they stay in America. But in the shadows, living in constant fear of deportation without the ability to legally work. All this, even though under the law today, they are eligible for long-term legal status. Today, I'm announcing a common-sense fix to streamline the process for obtaining legal status for immigrants married — excuse me — to American citizens who live — lived here and lived here for a long time. For those wives or husbands and their children who have lived in America for a decade or more but are undocumented, this action will allow them to file a paperwork for legal status in the United States, allow them to work while they remain with their families in the United States. Let's be clear, this action still requires undocumented spouses to file all required legal paperwork to remain in the United States. It requires them to pass a criminal background check, and it doesn't apply to anyone trying to come here today. It only applies to this action is a better way. It doesn't tear families apart while requiring every undocumented spouse to fulfill their obligations under the law. Look, the actions I'm announcing today will go into effect later this summer. And by the way, just as was true for the protection of dreamers, the steps I'm taking today are overwhelmingly supported by the American people, no matter what the other team says. In fact, polls show over 70 percent of Americans support this effort to keep families together. It's important. And the reason is simple. It embraces the American principle that we should be — keep families together. In 2013, President Obama and I took a similar action that allowed undocumented spouses and children of America's servicemen to stay together while they apply for legal status in America. Servicemen protecting our nation should not have to worry about keeping their families together, for God's sake. This policy has been in place for over a decade, and it's working well, and so will the new one. Look, let me close with this. I refuse to believe that to secure our border, we have to walk away from being in America. For that's generations have been renewed, revitalized, and refreshed by the talent, the skill, the hard work, the courage, and determination of immigrants coming to our country. Look, the Statue of Liberty is not some relic of American history. It stands — still stands for who we are. But I also refuse to believe that for us to continue to be America that embraces immigration, we have to give up securing our border. They're false choices. We can both secure the border and provide legal pathways to citizenship. But we have to acknowledge that the patience and goodwill of the American people is being tested by their fears at the border. They don't understand a lot of it. These are the fears my predecessor is trying to play on when he says immigrants, immigrants, and his words are poison the blood of the country. When he calls immigrants, in his words, animals. When he was president, he separated families and children at the border. And now he's proposing to rip spouses and children from their families and homes and communities and place them in detention camps. He's actually saying these things. It's hard to believe it's being said, but he's actually saying these things out loud. And it's outrageous. Folks, 
I'm not interested in playing politics with the border or immigration. I'm interested in fixing it. I said it before. I said it before, and I'll say it again today. I will work with anyone to solve these problems. That's my responsibility as President. That's our responsibility as Americans. Because the simple truth is, there's not a single damn thing we can't do if we put our minds to it. We've got to remember who in the hell we are. We're the United States of America, and nothing is beyond our capacity. We're a nation of immigrants. And that's who we are. God bless you all, and may God protect our forces. Thank you.